Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. It's beautiful out. It is. It's like open the door, turn the fan on, let it blow in. Yeah. Yeah. We'll go home and open the windows unless Diane already did. That Diane's already got it done. I don't have to worry about it. Yay. <laughs> Nothing like free air conditioning. That's Thank right. you, Lord. Well, for those of you who are online, welcome as well. Uh, let us know you're watching. Say hi in the comments uh, so that we know that you're here. Um, just some quick announcements. We have a busy month, so we'll get started real quick. Um, right off the bat, this is a holiday week. July 3rd is Wednesday, so no Bible study this week. So enjoy the festivities. Go out and uh, see the fireworks. Uh, do the different things that are available out there uh, for us to do to celebrate the birth of this country that allows us the freedom to meet each and every week. Then on Saturday, so there we go, we can skip that one slide, sorry about that. Men's breakfast, six, or 9 a.m., July 6th, I was going to say 6 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah, Mark, we have to be here at 4 for breakfast. <laughs> 9 a.m. for breakfast. Um, I'm sure, Denny, there will be biscuits and gravy, but the rest of the menu, just come and find out. Enjoy a time, uh, men can enjoy a time of fellowship, a uh, time of devotion, and certainly a great meal together. That afternoon, uh, we'll be hosting a private wedding ceremony here. Uh, Pastor Mark will be uniting in marriage, Carrie Sotelo and Shane Black, Denise and Steve Stone, yes. and and future son-in-law, almost son-in-law, yeah. <laughs> less than a week to go. So uh, we'll be doing that, and then they will have their reception after that. A week later, <laughs> we will start the Bible mini-series. This is, so the movie, The Son of God, that we recently watched, mm -hmm. this is the Bible series in which that was made from. So the History Channel put this up. 11 years ago now. It's hard to believe it's been that long. Uh, but uh, we'll be doing that. The sermon series starts next Sunday, and the Bible study then will begin on Wednesday the 10th. More about that at Grace Street Back Church, and then you can go to the Bible experience there, and there'll be more information about it. Then uh, Saturday the 13th, we'll be doing orange track racing. So uh, we didn't have it in June, so the Rip and Zip class, which is our variety class, which changes every month, you get a medal for winning it. We're going to do two classes that, uh, that week. We'll do June and July, and then the normal July races. And so it'll be a little bit busier day, but we hope everyone comes out and enjoys that. Uh, Mark and I have been looking into uh, the possibility of some new tracks since this track is 19 years old and uh, last time in May we literally had to take two eight-foot sections out and replace them with the section that we'd removed and there's actually a company out of Anamosa that makes track it's a different color so we talked about painting the wood orange <laughs> and putting the track on top of that so we'll see what that turns out like, but uh, we're looking forward to seeing what happens there with a new and improved track at that point. With that, then we have family movie night. Now, Mark last week, he said we were going to see Ordinary Angels, and the disappointment part of that is, is that it's not licensable yet. So the company that does license it has promised me that as soon as it is available, they will send me an email and let me know uh, what I have to do to so we can get that licensed. Uh, instead, we've got a different movie up called Priceless, and we'll be showing that on the 27th at 6 o'clock. Doors open at 5.30, free concessions, free movie, invite a bunch of people, and uh, we'll have a great time that night. Then for those of you that are watching online, uh, watch the comments. Pastor Mark will be putting up the link for the worship set for today. Uh, it's a great set, so um, please enjoy that once the service is over online. All right. Busy morning. It's been a hectic week for all of us. Some of us, unfortunately, more than others. But today is a day of rest. Today is the day that we can come before the Lord and just calm our hearts. So, Father, we just thank you for the day. This is, as the scripture says, the day the Lord has made. 
Lord, let us rejoice and be glad in it. As we prepare to hear your word, we pray a blessing upon Pastor Mark and the words that you've given to him to teach us today. As we finish up this incredible series, Engagement Project, Father, thank you for putting it in our hands so that we could get, grow deeper and deeper in love with you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. This morning's call to worship comes from 1 John 4, 7 through 11. And John writes, Dear friends, let us continue to love one another, for love comes from God. Anyone who loves is a child of God and knows God. But anyone who does not love does not know God, for God is love. God showed how much he loved us by sending his one and only son into the world so that we might have eternal life through him. This is real love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. Dear friends, since God loved us that much, we surely ought to love each other. Now, did anyone else take out of that that love is important? But over the past eight weeks and coming in today, we've also learned that God is the absolute source of love. And I was reading out of one of the uh, study Bibles, and it likened God's love in pointing us in the right direction the same way that a needle on a compass points us to north. And no matter what direction we spin with that compass in our hands, it always points north. God always points us to his love. So then the question becomes, how much did God love us? And I think last week we got a pretty healthy dose of that, especially on Wednesday night when we watched the video with Dr. Tackett teaching. He loved us so much that he sent his only son to die on the cross for us. And then, when he left, he left us with the power of the Holy Spirit, and the power of the Holy Spirit gives us the power to love like God, to love like Jesus. It's a choice, but it's also an action. The question that the series makes me wonder is how well are we displaying God's love? Are we falling for the, walk, the world's watered-down version of what love is? It's just a feeling. It doesn't take much. You can just throw it out there like you're throwing out candy in a parade. That's not what it is. So God love, God's love is why he created, why he cares, why we're free to choose, why Christ died, and why we receive eternal life. It is in God's love that we see completeness made by Jesus in human form. So when we love one another, God reveals himself to us through it, and then his love is made complete. Gracious Lord, as Mark comes up here this morning, again, we pray a blessing upon him. We pray that as he preaches, that you give him clarity of mind, that if there's anything that is getting in the way physically, that you just cause it to go away, that you bring him in whatever healing he might need. Father, we ask that you open our ears to hear, our minds to understand, and our hearts to take it and go out and love like Jesus. We thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Tray over there looks really good. I know, right? <laughs> That's why I'm walking this way. <laughs> Terry didn't make it past. <laughs> I almost didn't make it up there. <laughs> Can we take a quick break? Feel <laughs> <laughs> free. Hey, you guys want a, a quick treat? Go over there. There's blueberry cake donuts, which are, I, I had to sample one because one was kind of broken up a little bit. I didn't want you guys to have anything defective, so I spared you by eating it myself. 
And then there's pumpkin bars, yeah. and then there's uh, devil's yeah. food, cake, yeah. and with uh, cream cheese frosting on it. So. It, it is absolutely a temptation tray. So if you want to grab something, <laughs> feel free. We're we're pretty. Uh, yeah, Fourth of July cookies. Yeah, July cookies. I, <laughs> sorry, I almost missed those. So. Absolutely. <laughs> so we got lots of temptation over there on that table. Um, but good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. What a day it is today. Isn't this beautiful? Mm -hmm. Temperature's just perfect. Love it. The sun's out. It's beautiful. God is opening his heart and his mind up to us today so that we can come in and fully worship him. What an awesome day. Mm -hmm. So uh, next week, I'm going to set up a table out front here, and we're going to take those prayer shawls that Lynette made, and we're going to lay them out on the table, and then we're going to dedicate those and, and pray over those, yeah. and then we can give those out to uh, people in need who need the prayer shawls. And, and uh, who would benefit by those. So uh, we're going to look forward to that. I was going to do it today. However, um, we've had some technical difficulties. Um, so for some odd reason, my PowerPoint that I saved up, that I took care of and saved up, uh, didn't save up. So we had to recreate the whole thing this morning. Thank you, Terry. Oh, my God. Uh, He's a master. Yeah. With my head going right now, it's, it hasn't been, a, hasn't been a stellar morning. Let's put it that way. But today, we are wrapping up, if you can believe it, we've already had nine tours in the engagement project. Nine tours. And through this, we found, as the major thing, as Terry pointed out today, is God's love. And we were told that we have to love them like Jesus. And that's really important. Uh, it's called the Band of Brothers today. And, <laughs> It's kind of different because there's nothing in the narrative that talks about Band of Brothers. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but what it is, is we are a Band of Brothers brought together by the love of God. Mm -hmm. And we are to spread that love to one another and to our neighbors and things. And so through these nine tours that we've taken so far, we have one left to do this Wednesday night. And that's what the message is about today. No Wednesday, no Wednesday. No Wednesday night. No, mm -hmm. no Wednesday night. Yeah, you're right. That's 3rd of July. We discussed that, didn't we? Yeah. <laughs> I should tell you what this is today. It's just, you heard that theme music that was going thump, thump, thump. It matched almost perfectly what was going on in my head. So, uh, But in Tour Zero, we, we, live, we learned that we live in a world of not. N-A-U-G-H-T. Not. And that in doing so, we know that the worldview that we live in differs uh, differs completely different from what we have, greatly from our Christian worldview, and that the world does not have our best interest or even your welfare in mind, mm -hmm. but rather a self-serving and a self-centered worldview. And sometimes this can be summed up as you are the God of your own life and you need no other God in your life but you. And if you take a look at this, and, and I was thinking about this yesterday, and so I posted up, uh, you know, in God's eyes, the casual Christian and the casual atheist are pretty much the same. Because if we think about it, the casual Christian isn't totally committed to God. And so there's doubt or, you know, lack thereof. And a casual atheist, well, they might believe in something, but they have no belief in anything. So a, a true atheist believes in no theism at all, no God at all. There is no God whatsoever. And you are your own God, basically. So unfortunately, a lot of the world shares this worldview of, well, there might be something there, there might not be something there, and it's a casual. But in God's eyes, what is, how does God view that? Well, you know, I'm sorry. It's, a, it's kind of black and white when it comes to God. And we found that out in the scriptures and in things, you know, uh, and, and we'll talk about this when we see the, the clips on these, um, week after next maybe. Uh, but when we, when we take a look at this, um, in the Bible, it, it doesn't have any gray area. It's either 
you are or you aren't. Mm -hmm. Either you are for God or you are for the world, one of the two. So there's no gray area. It can't be kind of straddling the fence out there. And so unfortunately, the world kind of keeps us right there in the middle of that fence. If we concentrate and focus on the world view of things, we're straddling a fence for our whole life. Mm -hmm. That doesn't bode well when our time comes, mm -hmm. when we have to go and face God. Because what you'd love to hear is, yes, I'm totally committed to you, God. I served you well back on earth. And so therefore he says, well done, my good and faithful servant. Mm -hmm. However, if you're straddling that fence or you're on the other side of the fence, then he'll say, go and serve the one that you served while back on earth. I hope you love heat. Because there's no two ways in between. There's no middle ground. So we just simply need to look around us, and you won't have to look far in the world today to find those sentiments that it's self-serving, and it is the notion that God is not relevant or even wanted in today's society. How wrong is that? I mean, seriously, how wrong is that? You couldn't be further off from the truth. The one thing that this world needs right now, we need God more than ever, period. The world needs a relationship with God to desperately get back on track to civility and godliness. And I thought this was absolutely, you know, perfect for this week because our nation was founded. We left tyranny. We left religious oppression to found a new society based upon the merits of God, based on being a godly society, a godly people. And that's what we celebrate. We don't celebrate fireworks and hot dogs and all those kind of things. Mm -hmm. We are celebrating the fact that we have this birth of a new nation, one nation under yeah. God, yeah. indivisible, which means we cannot be split apart from that. And people don't understand. That's the Pledge of Allegiance. Mm -hmm. Well, see, they don't say the Pledge of Allegiance in school anymore. Mm -hmm. One nation under God, indivisible, means we cannot divide ourselves as a people or a nation from God. It is ingrained in our very nature, in our DNA. God created us to be this and to be this way, indivisible. We're supposed to be in communion with God, in a relationship with God. Moreover, we need to be in a deep, committed relationship with and that's how we find out how much God loves us. But the things of this world separate us from that. When we focus on the things of this world, it separates us from that deep understanding and that deep relationship with God. And so, as sin creeps into our lives and into our relationship, we find that we have a differing relationship. And we talked about this last Wednesday. Terry, I'm sorry this isn't in there, but uh, we talked about this last Wednesday night, and, and I said, until we get a firm grasp on the gravity of our sin, the amount of sin that we have, until we have a good grasp on our sinful nature ourselves, we cannot fully grasp the gravity and the stature of the sacrifice that was made to save us from that very sin. We can't, we can't really understand that sacrifice that Jesus made. What our salvation cost. Because there's a cost to everything. We found that since creation in the fall in Tours 1, 2, and 3, that Adam and Eve, of their own free will, chose to listen to the lies of the fallen one, and in doing so, separated themselves from God. And all mankind through the generations have been living out the result of their choice. We took on that sinful nature, that separation from God. So that sin started back then. And we have sin that needed to be atoned for ever since. So if you know the enormity of the amount of sin, then you understand the enormity of the sacrifice and the atonement that Jesus had to go through 
and the love that he had to share for that sin. We learned how God created us to live in a world that he created and that we were to be in communion with that world. We were to be good stewards of all that God created. In keeping with the world, he created that we were to do the will of God and be who he created us to be and to do what God created us to do. Be fruitful and multiply in the world around us. But not only that, but every creature that he created, he created to be fruitful and multiply. And we were to be good stewards of those creations and of the things that he created. And he created them each in their own way, but to do the same thing, to work in community with each other and to flourish in doing so. Which means he didn't just create us to be, he created us to be better and to be fruitful and to multiply and to flourish in our lives. He wanted us to have the fullness of God, that shalom that we talk about. That perfect peace of God to be reigned throughout our lives. But when we get separated from God, we let the evils of the world creep in. And that peace of God, that shalom, gets kind of lost in the mix. So this then led us to the royal engagement in tour number four. And there we learned the true nature of God and we began to see how God wanted us to be in communion with each other, to commune with each other. And I know I'm using that word a lot today, but it's very, very important for you to understand that. We have to be and abide with each other just as we are being and abiding in Christ himself. Because if Christ is not in the middle of us here, we can't have that Christian relationship with one another. We get separated and we get into the divisions that the world creeps in. And we know all about the divisiveness of the world. But when we are in communion with each other, then we allow each other and we help each other. We edify each other. We lift each other up and help each other flourish. And that is the plan of God that with us in communion with one another, we are edified and we lift each other up and we are able to then be fruitful and multiply. I don't mean just going out having a bunch of babies. What I'm saying is we are fruitful in the Spirit of God and to share that Spirit of God with others. So, we are not simply created to coexist but to be in communion with each other. We learned that God wanted us to have the kind of love for one another as God loved us first. And it took a couple of lessons in here, a couple of the tours, to go through and really truly fully understand that love of God and what that love of God looks like and what it means. And that is what that royal engagement was all about. Um, we, we learned that that love was not a kind of a flippant love, kind of an emotion, but rather it was, a, it was a love that had a purpose. And that purpose was the true shalom of those who dwelt within our purview, in our Jerusalem is what, what he called it in there. So in our communities, in our workplace, in our churches, we are to be one another, we are to commune with one another, not just simply to coexist, but have that spirit of God, that love of God for one another, so that we can lift each other up, so that we can edify each other in the spirit. We can edify each other and bring us through. Uh, God gave us each gifts and talents that we can share with the others. And in doing so, uh, it's if you go back and you read the, uh, Corinthians and you, you look at the gifts of the Spirit and you say okay well we are all one body however each body has a different function but we come together as a complete body and as we are a complete body in communion with each other we are working together for the goodness for the shalom of the entire body so we, as the body of Christ, brothers and sisters in Christ, united with God in the middle, in communion with one another, then represent that true shalom, that perfect peace 
God's fullness in our lives with one another. See how all that fits together? These scriptures mean something. And they're telling us the way to have a full and complete life in and through God and the Holy Spirit and in Jesus. So our neighbors, we found out, we have to have that same true true love for them that we want to have them to have the true fullness of God. And I kind of shared that we have some neighbors there that are a challenge. <laughs> well, we had one set of neighbors just moved away this week. So we prayed about it. I said, you know, God, tell me how to, how to try and get these people and get them on the same page. And they moved away. So, thank you, God. <laughs> he made that one kind of easy for me. So. He says, Mark, you're off the hook. And I went, wow. wow. So that was a kind of a tall order for us. You know, God wants us to have that true goodness and fulfillment of God for our neighbors. And we are to do so with agape love, a self-sacrificing love. And we learned that other word that goes along with that, which is hesed. And hesed, then, the Hebrew word hesed means that it is a true and enduring love, then. An agape love, self sacrificing love that is enduring. So it is agape hesed love for our neighbors. The same kind of sacrificial, enduring love that God has for us. And that brought us up into tours five, six, and seven. And in there, we learned we not only need to have casual conversing with our neighbors, but we need to have a deep and engaged relationship with our neighbors. Ooh, there's a challenge. But we were to flavor that, remember that, as being flavored with salt, with grace, with wisdom, and with truth. All the while, showing them that agape love and that caring that God has for us. We cannot possibly bring them into communion with each other unless we show them that love that God has because God is love. How can we share God without love? So we have to go into that with the spirit of love, the spirit of God. Jesus showed us the way in his walk here on earth. He didn't go in ready to duke it out with somebody. He went in and showed them love. He showed them grace. He did it with wisdom. And he showed them the truth. Because he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. See, those words we probably read over and over again all our lives. But until you put it into correct context, like we've done here, in these tours, sometimes the words are lost and the meaning, the true meaning behind those words and what God wants us to understand out of all this is that true shalom. We need to understand that love relationship because love is at the foundation of everything. So, not a tall order at all, right? <laughs> Well, we also learned that God didn't leave us alone to do all of this mighty work on our own. He sent Jesus to be and abide with us here on earth. Now, unfortunately, we didn't get to hang out with him like the disciples did and some of the other people, which, man, can you imagine what that would have been like each and every day? Wow. I mean, that just bowls me over because I was writing this and I was just going, what would I do if Jesus came walking up to me and he goes, Mark, follow me. And I was, as I was writing this, I was going, on one hand, that would be so cool, and on the other hand, it would be frightening. But it'd be great. <laughs> because we know how it turns out, and we know what his purpose was. But at the time, he didn't. Here's a strange guy walks up to you and says, hey, follow me. Drop your nets. Hop out of your boat and follow me. What did that take for them to do that? What will it take for us to do the same thing? Kind of makes you wonder, huh? 
Well, we learned the reason that Jesus gave himself up for us and left this earth was to be at the right hand of the Father. And we learned that in tour number seven. And Jesus left us after he showed us the way to be in communion with one another. To show a deep and abiding love for one another. And a deep and abiding love for God. Have you ever noticed as you're reading through what Jesus did every time? Before he went and did anything, what did he do? He stopped and opened up the communication lines with God. He made that cell phone. He invoked God into every aspect of what he was doing. See, he gave us that as an example of what we need to do. Problem is, we kind of hard charge into it on our own, and then we go on, okay, what did I get myself into? Because we didn't go to God first and pray about it and invite him to be a part of it. So therefore, we weren't blessed with what God had intended originally, and he goes, okay, learn your lesson, now come back to me and we'll do it right this time. Had that lesson thrown at me maybe once or ten times. So he taught us how to be in a deep and abiding love with God and what that deep and abiding love meant with God. God sent us the advocate of the Holy Spirit to dwell within us and to guide us through the life that God planned for us. And this was not out of obligation, but it was done out of pure love. Agape love, a sacrificial love that is enduring and everlasting. So if you learn anything out of all these words that I've been teaching you through this whole series, is that agape love is a deep love, an enduring love, an everlasting love. How much love does God have? Well... As I said once, we try and put God in a box. In our humanness, we try and make him into our own human understanding of his capabilities and his abilities. But see, God is timeless. He's omniscient. He's omnipotent. And in being omnipotent, he is enduring and everlasting. So his love is great enough to surround the entire world. We need to understand that because we look at it as our ability to love, we kind of superimpose on God's ability to love. That doesn't work that way. So in our call to worship this morning came from 1 John 4, and it's the scriptural example of how are you to live in communion with one another because of the love that God gave us first. Dear friends, let us continue to love one another, for love comes from God. Anyone who loves is a child of God and knows God. But anyone who does not love does not know God, for God is love. God showed us how much he loved us by sending his one and only son into the world so that we might have eternal life through him. See, this is real love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice to take away our sin. And dear friends, since God loved us that much, we surely ought to love each other just as much. See, God sent him, sent us his son. While we were yet sinners, God sent his son Jesus and he died for our sins to release us from that bondage that we had. It was a ransom pay a ransom paid for us. So here we talk about the love of God and what the love of God has for us. Now notice that this is in the present tense. If you notice what the word said there, it wasn't for a long time ago, but it's a statement of how God loves us now. It's an enduring, everlasting love. Yes, this was written 2,500 years ago, but guess what? It's still true. It's in the present tense, which means this is an everlasting love that God has for us right here, right now. It wasn't 2,500 years ago. It's today. It's now. It's tomorrow. It's the day after. It's everlasting. 
And it continues on in verses 12 through 16. No one has ever seen God, but if we love each other, God lives in us and his love is brought to full expression in us. And this is why we were talking about that shalom, that agape love that we had to have for our neighbors and to show our neighbors. His love is brought to full expression in us. We are the representing, the representation of God's love to others. And God has given his, his spirit as, uh, as proof that we live in him and he in us. This is abiding. That's what I mean about being and abiding. This is what that means. Furthermore, we have seen with our own eyes how and now testify that the Father sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. All who confess that Jesus is the Son of God and have God living in them and they live in God. That's that relationship, the commitment to God. That's what I started talking about at the very beginning today. We know how much God loves us and we have put our trust in his love. Put our trust in his love. See, God, the love of God is manifested in our very soul. But God didn't intend for us to keep this gift to ourselves. It's, it's like that Christmas present that you get. Do you keep it wrapped up all year long and you put it up on a shelf and you put it up in the closet to close the door? Because that way you can take it out a year from now and guess what? That present's still there. No. You take that present, you open it up, and you use that present. The love of God is a gift from God. It's a gift from God. It's manifested in our very soul. It's written into our DNA. It is who he created us to be. And that's what this is talking about here. And that brings us to proselytizing. Who all here knows what the word proselytizing is? It's a big word, right? Well, proselytizing just simply means that we are going to spread with vigor. It means we're going to put some action behind us in here. We're going to spread that message that we truly believe in with vigor. We're going to proselytize that. We're going to spread that message out to others. Now, most of the people call it proselytizing is, you know, that you have a word in your employee manuals in there that you're not to proselytize at work, and that just means you're not supposed to try and convert other people at work and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> But the living, loving word of God, who has that shalom for them as well, we're supposed to go out and proselytize that to the world. We're supposed to spread that word with vigor because we deeply and truly believe in it. It's a commitment that comes from our soul, written into our DNA. Any of this sound familiar? Yeah. So this is how and why God created us. And so we are go and we are supposed to go into the world and be who God created us to be, and we are supposed to go into the world and do what God created us to do. And that's called proselytizing. Simple. So, uh, this is why God created us, to love God and spread that love to others. Not just any kind of love, but what kind of love? Agape love. God has shown his love towards humanity since the very creation of time since the very creation of time. And we talked about that Wednesday night. We have two different types of time. Anybody remember what that is? Kronos and? Kairos? Kairos. Right. So we have Kronos, which is a measurement of time. So if we look from the time that God created everything, and a Kronos in a chronological order, if that makes sense, that's that word Kronos, that's where it comes from. Chronological comes from Kronos. But that is a measurement of time. Kairos means in that perfect moment that God created for this to happen. And that is a Kairos moment in your lives. We learned about that in uh, tour number eight. Um, but this is why God created us. To love and to spread that love to others. That agape love, that true Hashed love, right? Mm -hmm. It's an enduring and everlasting love. Mm -hmm. Okay, self-sacrificial love. Because God has shown his love towards that humanity. And ever after sin entered into the world, God promised his love to every generation since. 
So if we look at, at the Bible and, and we truly start to understand it, this is God's love letter to the people. God created us out of love. He created the world out of love. He created us to be stewards of that creation, everything that he created. But the neat thing about it is he created us to be without sickness, without death. Man, I'll tell you what, I'd love to have a world without migraine headaches. Because they're terrible. <laughs> they really are. That's my eyes are all watery. But see, we separated ourselves from God. We separated ourselves from that creation by the fall of the Garden of Eden. But this book tells us the way to come back to God, to be that godly people that he created us to be, to do what God created us to do. And when we really didn't get it, what did he do? He sent his son, Jesus, to come and save us from that. So through that love for us that he has for us, our faith in him, God meets our deepest needs and the longing of our hearts. There's nothing that we could ever do to earn his love. So that's that agape love. It comes without any strings. It's, you don't have to earn that love. It's driving me crazy. God's love isn't a one-way street. Okay? It isn't a one-way street. It runs both ways. He also calls us then to love one another as he loved us. Those words sound familiar? Yeah. He commanded us to love him, love ourselves, and love others, and that we are to do that same thing with grace, with wisdom, and truth that he gives us through the spirit of holiness that dwells within us. Pretty neat plan, isn't it? No one is perfect in how they love. Only God is perfect. However, with his help, by the invocation of the Holy Spirit living and dwelling within us, as we concentrate on that, as we commit ourselves to that, guess what then? We can strive to be Christ-like in the way that we love through the example that Christ set for us. And this is the scriptural reference from our call to worship this morning because God tells us we love because God loved us first. He instructs us. Beloved, let's love one another for love is from God and whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Anyone who does not know God because God is love. And it's kind of a hard thing for us to understand at times. It's kind of a hard thing for us to understand at times because Sometimes we don't feel loved. And when we don't feel loved, and when we can't recognize love, we have a hard time loving anyone else and showing love to another person. But we have to understand from our very core, from our very soul, God loves us. We always have the love of God with us, no matter what. So when we're not feeling love, it's because we lost our focus on God. We can't feel the love of God when we're not focused on God. We need to refocus. We need to change our perspective. When we change our perspective, what happens? Oh, we remember that, don't we? Yes. Okay. There's a reason we teach all these things. Um, Sometimes we just don't feel like we're worthy of love. But see, God didn't make his love for us on the basis of being worthy. He didn't make us his salvation through his son Jesus because we are worthy. Just the opposite. He gives us his love. He sent us his son Jesus because we weren't worthy. We're only made worthy through and through our love for him. So trying to show our love for others at times may be impossible because we lost our focus on love. Because God is love. Pretty simple when we think about it. So do you love God and have a relationship with him? I want you to ask yourself that question. It's a reflection question. You don't have to stand up and shout it out unless you want to. 
So God sent his son Jesus to die on the cross that you could be saved and have that loving relationship with God. Jesus didn't die for only those who were worthy. He died for all because we weren't worthy. See, if you were the only person on the planet, Jesus still would have died for you because he loves you that much. I want that to sink in. If you were the last person on the planet, last person on the planet, Jesus would still have died for you because he loves you that much. The Bible tells us that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and you believe with God in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. There wasn't any gray area in there. Notice it didn't say anything about being worthy in there. Let me read it to you again. It says that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Not if Mark is worthy enough today. Or if he deserves it. See, in Tour 8, we learn that sometimes we love little because we don't feel loved. And Jesus endured torture, suffering that we cannot even fathom because of this steadfast, enduring love that he had for us. While we were yet sinners, Jesus died for us. Those words mean something. That means because we weren't worthy, he died for us anyway. Because we weren't worthy. So a lot of times we say, oh, my sins aren't that bad. So maybe I can't really understand that kind of love, that, that sacrificial love that he made for me. Because, you know, I, I talked about that Wednesday night, you know, whose, whose sin was worse? The kid who stole the penny candy from the store or the guy that murdered somebody? Well, see, in God's eyes, they're the same. Because sin is sin is sin is sin. We tend to judge others on that same sliding scale of who is worthy and who isn't worthy. But see, all are worthy through the love of God. We have to get that in our mindset to start with. Because until we do, we can't go out and proselytize. We can't share this love with vigor to others. Because we won't believe it in our heart. God doesn't judge on a sliding scale. He doesn't view sin on a sliding scale. He doesn't judge who's worthy on a sliding scale. See, we are human constructs, and we can't view God through our humanness. We've got to stop doing that. We're putting God in a box that he can't fit into. We can't equate God with our human frailties and our misconceptions. But we tend to do exactly that. What is impossible for us is not impossible for God. If we view God, what God did for us through Jesus on the cross, by human standards, by our misconceptions, then we will never understand the sacrifice that was made. As I've said many times, you know, it wasn't the nails and it wasn't the ropes that kept Jesus on the cross. It was our sins and his love for us, that sacrificial love that kept him on the cross. That's what held him. That's what took him to the cross. It was our sins and his love for us to save us from those sins. <coughs> so what's impossible for us is not impossible for God. A sacrificial, enduring love with no justifications, no conditions attached. That's what kept Jesus on the cross. Only when we understand that can we fully follow what Jesus said. And that was to love our neighbors as ourselves, unconditionally, without reservation, without judgment. There's a tough one. Didn't say it was going to be easy. He just said, do it. Right? <coughs> love others as Jesus loved us first. In John 13, 34 through 35, he also says, A new commandment I will give you, that you love one another just as I have loved you. You are also to love one another. By this all people will know that you are my disciples, for if you have love for one another. 
Okay, well that's all well and good, but how do we do that? Well, as I mentioned before, start small, work big. Start with who? Your neighbor. Start with God, right? Mm -hmm. Jesus made his phone call up every time. He prayed to God first before he started. <laughs> Bring God into it. He will invoke the Holy Spirit when we ask for the Holy Spirit to be invoked in, in that life, in that situation, in that moment. He will invoke the Holy Spirit and he will bring us through. He will give us the guidance that we need. See, it's easy to love our friends. It's easy to love family. It's easy to love people who are nice and who you admire. But what about the people who hate you or have rejected you? How about the people who are just plain mean and unlikable? I think I shared with you about one of the guys that I worked with for the last nine years. And I mean, this guy can come in and you can have the best day ever. And he'll come in and just rain on your parade. Well, you know what? We sat down about, oh, right before I had my operation in January. So it's right about Christmas time. He and I sat down. For some odd reason, he, he never does this. Come in, plopped himself down in, in my office, in the chair in my office, and we sat there and talked for about 45 minutes. And boy, I'll tell you what, he just kind of opened the floodgates and let it all come out. But you want to know something? He's been a whole different person ever since. Ever since. Super nice, says good morning with a smile. What? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's amazing. Invited us to come up and, and yeah. come up to their cottage up on the Mississippi River up by Lansing up there. It says, if you ever need a place to stay and you're up there, let me know and you can come and stay at our place. Mm -hmm. I went, wow, this is a whole different thing. Mm -hmm. So even people who are just mean and unlikable, sometimes they need to just let you know what's troubling them so you can give them a way out of that trouble and it changes them you didn't change them God did see no matter what Jesus says love them too so if we show them that love of God we show them that love of Jesus he does the work we don't have to he does the work we don't have to uh, sometimes the most unlovable people are the ones that are hurting in need of Jesus' love the most. And who knows, by loving them, when nobody else does, you might just change their eternity. Being placed here by God to do what God created us to do and be who God created us to be. That's all he asks. Love one another as I have loved you first. See, that's the most incredible way to show your love to others, introducing them to Jesus Christ. Jesus instructs us in Matthew 28, 19 to 20 to do what? To share our faith to others and make them disciples. So what better way to show someone than introducing them to a God who is love? Who is love? We need to be that one on Friday. Sunday's coming. We need to be that one. So I posted a challenge I had for 50 people and I asked them to join me in being that one. So far I haven't had anybody be, be a taker. But be that one. The one who forgives when deep offense has been committed. That one who loves when no one else does. That one who gives kindness to those who are mean. Be that one who looks past the insult instead of seeing the pain that motivated it. That one who shines light through those who sit in utter darkness because the impact of being that one runs far and wide. It brings healing to the wounded, joy to the sad, hope to those who are in be despair. Be that one. Nobody's taken me up on that challenge yet. I said, put your name in the comments if you'd like to join with me. It's been three days, nobody's joined. 
Why? Why? See, if you're going to be that one, by loving them when nobody else does, you may just change their eternity. Be that one. Will you do that? Will you join with me in taking that small step that can lead to eternal consequences? Let's all strive to be the one. The one God created us to be. The one Jesus calls us to be. The one Jesus who died to give us the example how to sacrificially love and serve others first. Be the one starting today. Father God, you've given us a lot of things to think about. You've uh, talked to us about so many things in this study. Opened our eyes to so many things. Lord, help us, guide us and direct us from our heart of hearts to step up and step out of the world that has inflated us, that has just blown us out of proportion. Lord, bring us back down to who you created us to be. Let us be that one that will step up and step out for another to selflessly serve another, to sacrificially love another, enduring and everlasting. Lord, help us to bring them home to you so that they will know this love because you are love. Thank you, Lord God, for giving us the opportunity for these studies, for bringing us together, for being the family that you have created us to be. There's no mistake that we are all here, called by you to be in communion with one another, to be your church today. Thank God. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Yeah, I know, don't have your phone out here in church, but first one. <laughs> Maybe you should have waited until you finished um, taking the drink. How was your note? It was funny. I think it was too. It's full coffee right now. <laughs> We've said it before and I'll say it again. This is the culmination of God's love for us. This is our reminder each week when we come together, worship, hear a message. But when we share this meal, we're sharing in God's love as well. We're being reminded of what his son did on the cross. For it was on the night that Jesus was betrayed that he took the bread and he broke it, saying, this is my body broken for you. Take and eat. Later in the meal, he took the cup, and after filling it, said, this is the cup of the new covenant. My blood poured out for the sins of many. Take and drink. Scripture tells us that as often as we do this, we're to do so until Christ returns. And I know every day, with the way that we see the world going, we're saying, come Lord Jesus, come. But it's in God's time, it's in his time. He loves us so much that he is waiting because he knows who the last person is and he is waiting for that person and when that person does accept Christ. That's when we'll see Jesus coming. If it's in my lifetime, praise the Lord. If it's not, I'll be watching. Watching and waiting. The body of Christ broke for you. Take me. And that blood of Christ shall be to take and drink. Before I have Denise come up here for the prayers for the people, I'm reminded of a passage from Jude today. 
This is the final verses of the book of Jude, the whole one chapter book of Jude. It's called, the, the perk B is called a prayer of praise. And the, Jude writes, now all glory to God who is able to keep you from falling away and will bring you with great joy into his glorious presence without a single fault. All glory to him who alone is God, our Savior through Jesus Christ our Lord. All glory, majesty, power, and authority are his before all time and in the present and beyond all time. Amen. 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 <clears throat> good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. I'm, I'm for prayers for the people. So is there anybody that would like to ask for prayer this morning? Okay, we'll start in. Okay, Father God. We are in awe of your mighty works. You created heaven and this beautiful earth for us to enjoy. You pour water on the earth to nourish your plants, flowers, and trees. Everything is touched by your hand. And we praise you today and thank you for your goodness and mercies new each and every passing day. You put all things into place according to your will. As Isaiah 55, 9 through 11 states, as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. As the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish, so that it yields seed for the sower and, and bread for the eater, so is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. Heaven and earth are firmly established and they will not be moved. We thank you, Jesus, that when the rains come and flood par parts of the earth, you are there holding back the water from complete destruction. This earth is yours and everything in it. We praise you when you calm the storms. Help us to praise you through the storms in this life. For you never leave us or forsake us. I pray for all who are cleaning up after tornadoes, hurricanes, fires, and floods. I pray people look to heaven and find you in the midst of their trials. I pray they call on your name and ask you into their lives so that they might find peace in the midst of the storms in their lives. For as long as we live on this earth, we will have troubles to con contend with. But if we know and believe in the God who created all things, we can have the peace that passes all understanding, and we can stand through the storms instead of being washed away by them. For you will protect and guide us if we trust in you. Father God, we lift up Debbie Brooks and Bill Kaler and my friend Kim's brother, Rich, to you this morning. These three people are in the fight of their lives. We ask that you give them peace in their struggles doctors and nurses that have wisdom to help in their, in their situations. I pray for healing from their illnesses. I pray they know you and lean on every word from the Bible to comfort them daily. Please be with them and guide them through each passing day. Help them and their families to trust in you. I pray for Charity for her surgery that she's having tomorrow. Please guide the doctor's hands, Lord and let it go according to your will and be with her daily and help comfort her through this trial that she is in. Father God, I lift up those that are here and online who are ill or have cancer, these who are lost and who are searching for you. You are Yahweh Rapha, the Lord who heals. Let us call on your name and speak your name over our bodies for healing. Help us to speak verses from the Bible over ourselves and others that you will see and hear and heal their bodies. The words in the Bible live and breathe in our lives, in our minds and hearts. Help us to speak them aloud over our lives for protection and healing. We are not just to pray for others, but for ourselves, for you are God of all, not just some. Your words are healing to each body that calls on the name of the Lord. 
Father God, I ask for travel mercies for my family and all those traveling this week to and from their homes, that you ride with them and put a hedge of protection around them. Keep them calm and alert at all times as they drive. Give them wisdom to do the right things. Give them a clear path, Father God. And Father God, I ask a special blessing on my daughter, <laughs> Carrie and Shane, as they get married this coming Saturday. I pray all things go according to plan. I ask for a beautiful day, and may, your, may you gift them with peace in their hearts and minds as the day unfolds. May you bless this marriage, help them to always put you first, and to honor you with their lives. Please let the Holy Spirit fill this church, and may Carrie and Shane and their sons learn to follow you in their lives. Mold them together as a family so that they will be blessed by you. You are a great God, and I thank you and praise you for my children and their families. We praise you for all the families of this church and our children as you guide us on your path to life everlasting. And Father God, I want to thank you that Oklahoma has now put you back into their schools with the Ten Commandments and the Bible. I pray that the fire of your word continues to spread over our nation before the upcoming school year. We praise you for your mighty works, Father God. Bless the homeless, Father. Put a hedge of protection around those that seek you. I pray for Don as he travels. May the Holy Spirit walk with him and guide him and protect him on his journey and bring him back home safely. Thank you for all things, for you are God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. In your precious name we ask. This brings us to the end of our online portion of the uh, service today. And uh, I praise you and thank you for being here with us today, whether you're here in person or online. Uh, the music that we created today, I would like to make sure that if you don't know the words, listen to the words. You don't have to sing them out. But if you know it, stand up and sing. I'm going to be standing and singing today. Because we need to make that joyful noise to the Lord. It makes our hearts sing, our holy of holies. It brings us that hallelujah rejoicing that we have. Because we need to rejoice. This is the day that the Lord created. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Gracious Lord, thank you for this opportunity to gather here together freely and openly today and to hear your word, your message, uh, both in word and in song. And Lord, we ask that you would speak to our hearts and that we would live it out each and every day as we go into this world who wants to seek and separate us from you. Help us to focus on your love, your peace, and your joy each and every day. And Lord, we thank you for the freedoms that you gave us. This country was founded on the freedoms that come from you, Lord. Not from fighting. Not from war but freedom that comes from love, from devotion. Ultimately, it all comes from you. We praise you and thank you in all these things. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.